But all he could say is pray for Turkey, please pray for Turkey. Because he was afraid what might be said or done towards the church. God has blessed them. Doors have been opened. They're waiting so that they can have a public church, but they're going from home to home. And souls are still being saved right there, what Revelation called the seat of Satan. So we're so thankful for our brother. We don't know his name. All we know is Pastor Why. God knows his name because he's fearful or not fearful, but he knows the enemy would try to destroy him and kill him if they knew who he was. So let's keep him lifted up in prayer that God will just bless and will continue to give them many souls. Revelation chapter 9 verse 6. You want to keep your Bibles open there in front of you this morning. I want to preach for just a few moments on a subject which I never thought that I would preach about. But he says this. Listen in verse 6. And in those days shall man seek death. Now think about that for a moment. Death usually seeks us. And instead of us looking for death, we usually try to run from death. Don't we? That's why when you open your medicine cabinet, all them bottles fall out. But listen to what he says. And in those days shall man seek death and shall not find it. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. I want to speak about when death shall flee. Father, mm. thank you for the Holy Ghost of God in this house. Take charge right now, Lord, of this message and this messenger. Have your will and your way in this house. Let your word go forth and let it accomplish, let it bring to pass what you send it forth to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep these words in mind and flip over with me to chapter 8, when death shall flee. Chapter 8, verse 1, we talked about last Sunday. It's when there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. All of heaven fell silent because of the things, the horrible, awful judgments that were about to come. Verse 2, it says, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given Seven trumpets. We've had the seven sealed judgments. We've seen them one by one. We've talked about them. Now the world is about to experience the seven trumpet judgments. Verse 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. This altar that he stands at now is the altar of incense which is in heaven. There was given unto him much incense. This altar of incense that we're talking about in heaven is a pattern for the altar of incense that stood in the tabernacle. When the tabernacle was on earth, we mentioned it a few Sundays ago, this particular altar of incense stood before the veil. The veil represents Christ Jesus stood before the veil during the time of the law. He goes on now and he says that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Verse 4, And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God, out of the angel's hands. A few Sundays ago we spoke about that. Your prayers are not wasted. God hears your prayers. And your prayers are as incense to God. A sweet smelling savor as they come. The devil would have you to think that God doesn't want to hear your prayers. And that you're bothering God. But to God it is a sweet smelling savor. He desires the prayers of his saints. He desires you to pray and call upon his name. And there have fellowship with him. Isn't that a wonderful thing? To think about the God of the universe desires our prayers. 
And yet we ignore Him. Oh, we didn't like that, did we? We do, don't we? He desires us to pray and yet we go about our day and we never stop and pray. Give Him praise, our honor, our glory for His blessings and for His goodness. Verse 5, I've got to go on for a go to meddling. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar. This is the altar that he's speaking about now is the brazen altar in heaven. This altar typifies the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His death was necessary that we might be redeemed. The angel took this censer and he filled it with fire that was upon the altar. And he cast it into the earth. With the salvation of the cross being rejected, now the earth is about to receive the judgment of the cross. Men may think that it can spit in the face of God and they can reject the cross. And they can reject the sacrifice that Christ done. But let me remind them there is a day when judgment will come upon this earth as man has never known judgment before. God bankrupt heaven as it were that man might be saved and sent us the greatest gift there was, His Son Jesus Christ. And man despised and do despise unto the cross and to the blood of Christ. But let me tell you there's coming a day when man will cry out that they have rejected Him. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when it was cast into the earth, the last part of this verse says, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared them selves to sound. I want to remind you, I want to remind the world this morning that if the cross is rejected, judgment will follow. Amen. Yes, my God is a loving God. His love is beyond my imagination. His love is beyond my comprehension. But He is also a God that keeps judgment. And when the cross is rejected, there is no other way. There is no way whereby man must be saved but at the cross of Jesus. The first trumpet is about to sound. Now a lot of people will compare them and we're not going to take time. I started looking at this. You can go in Exodus chapter 7. You can read about the plagues of Egypt. And you can see the different plagues and the different things that happen. And as you begin to compare them, you, you say, well, this is just like that. But besides this happening and that happening. So if you want to go to the book of Exodus, you can next week and you can read and see that these plagues are things that have happened, many of them that have taken place. It reminds me, and as we go through, and I'll say this here in just a moment uh, further, that these are literal things I believe that happen. A lot of people say, oh, I can't get into the book of Revelation because I don't understand all the symbols. Well, what symbols? These are literal things. These are things that will happen. Brother Doug, you believe thunders and voices and lightnings and earthquakes? Yes. Just like he said. It's going to take place. So keep that in mind. But in the book of Joel, and you can flip there. If if you don't find it before I start reading, just stop flipping and people will think you're there. But Joel chapter 2, because I I can't take time to wait on you this morning. Joel chapter 2 and verse 30 says this. And I will show wonders in the heavens. This is back in Joel's day he prophesied. And in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Then the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Speaking of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. You see, as I go through the book of Revelation, I'm reminded even though God is pouring out judgment, He is still looking for man to repent. What a loving God. What a merciful God. So back in Joel, he says, Those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the raiment whom the Lord shall call. The first trumpet. 
The first angel sounded. And there followed hail. Listen to this. Hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees were burnt up. Was burnt up. And all the green grass was burnt up. Brother Doug, what does this mean? What, 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 what does it mean when it, says, when it says hell and fire mingle with blood? That's what it means. Well, Brother Doug, how can that be? Well, in 1921, the Word of God needs no proof. It stands on its own. But in 1921 in China, in a place called Young Now, it is recorded this very thing happened. They had hell, and it was mingled with blood that came upon the earth. Whether it had ever happened before, it's going to happen. It's going to take place. And a third part of the trees and of the grass are going to be burnt up. Now the second trumpet sounds, verse 8. Listen. The angel sounded, and as it were a great... Notice these words. As it were... He lets us know when he's showing us something that looks like something that he's not sure it's what it is. And as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Brother Doug, is it a burning mountain? Well, I don't know. It could be, but he says, as it were... A burning mountain. So I believe in, in, in my thinking that is a meteorite that God has sent down. Not that on its own has come down, but God has says, all right, you've been reserved right there. It's time to hit right where you need to hit. And when it hits, it is going to destroy a third part of the creatures which are in the sea that had life. They die. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. Now, as you study the book of Revelation, you'll find that there is many scholars whom, whom you can read and, and love, and they disagree. You may disagree with some of the things I'm about to say. I hope you don't disagree that these things are going to take place. If you do, then I'll have an argument with you. But if you have a different spin or a different take, a little bit of what might go on, that's fine. Different scholars do. Some people here believe that, you know, when... when, when these things begin to happen. It's only going to be in the part of the old Roman Empire. Well, if it is, it is. But think about this for just a moment. Do you remember back when we had the last big recession? I really believe it was more of a depression than a recession. But you know, they try to keep these things from us. Our politicians on both sides of the aisles who are honest. Boy, I didn't hear no amen there. But whenever it was, I can't remember, 2008, 9, 10, somewhere in there, we stood in it. Why did we have that? Because a little country called Greece, that most of you all didn't even know existed, had a hiccup in their economy. And look what it done all around the world. Let me tell you, when these things happen, it's going to affect the world. We are going to be affected. You can argue it any way you want to argue it, but you're not going to hide from these things of tribulation. They are going to come. It is going to affect all. Let me go on. So we see this happens, and now the third trumpet sounds. Notice in this third trumpet, I had never really realized until a few years ago I was crazy enough to sit on the town board and began to learn things. Water is a valuable thing. Yes, it is. I heard them talking about water and I thought, well, who don't have water? It's valuable. It was so valuable that Curse Scott Dam, a popular big city, I won't call its name, down below us when they first built that dam, purchased a third. Way back then they knew water was going to be a commodity. A third of all the water is theirs. Can't be touched. Got to be sent down to them down the river when they want it. They have water rights to it. Do you realize how important water is? It is evidently, increasingly becoming important. Many countries 
do not have a water supply to sustain them and keep them. Think about it. Go home. Put a lock on your spigot or cut the pump off if you dare. And see how often you go to that water. Water, the third trumpet. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven, burned it as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, which is a very bitter herb, a very bitter thing. The third parts of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. I believe this literally happened. Some people says that this star that fell from heaven is Satan, as you can read in the book of Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, that Satan fell from heaven. I, I myself believe it was a star. He called it wormwood. It falls in the rivers and it brings bitterness. Regardless of which way you believe, these rivers, these waters are going to be made undrinkable. And hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, will die from lack of water. The fourth trumpet. Think about all these other things that have happened and now the fourth trumpet and the fourth angel sounded. The third part of the sun was smitten. The third part of the moon. The third part of the stars, so that the third part of them was darkened. And the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Brother Doug, what does this mean? It means what it says. These are literal. These things will happen. Jesus himself in Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 26, spoke of these things when these things would happen and when these things would take place. Verse 13. And I beheld and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven with a loud voice. Listen to this. But the dog, do you believe that an angel's going to be seen flying through heaven just as sure as you're sitting where you're sitting? Some people says, oh, it's the worldwide satellite, it's the worldwide TV, it's the worldwide web that, that's flying through the air. Well, you believe it like you want to believe it, I won't argue with you. It's going to happen, but I believe a literal angel, God allows men to see this happen, and he cries out these words, woe, woe, woe. And it's not ho, 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 it's woe, woe, woe to the world. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are about to be sounded. These things have been so horrible. These things have been so awful. But now an angel flies over and he's beginning to remind us that the things we have seen take place in the first four trumpets are nothing compared to the next three. Let me hurry. For chapter 9, the first woe and the fifth trumpet. And the fifth angel sounded, this is the first woe. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Again, we will not argue. Some people feel like this is Satan. You can read, as I mentioned again a while ago, in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, how that Satan is cast from heaven down to the earth. Many people will say this is the time that he is kicked out of the heavenlies and kicked down to the earth. I won't argue with you. I believe it's an angel. If, if Satan is given, if this is Satan that falls, that star from heaven, and he is given a key to the bottomless pit, he will only do what Christ tells him to do. He can only, as Brother Curtis reminded us of this Wednesday night, he can only do what God will allow. So if it is Satan, he will have so far to go. Verse 2, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Brother Doug, what is that? Well, it's a great pit. That's what it is. It's a great pit. And when he opens it, what happens? Smoke as of a burning furnace. And it darkens these things. Just like it's literal. 
Listen. And then there came, verse 3, there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And, pa- and unto them, unto them, listen, and unto them was given power. They did not have that power. Notice that. But unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. Normally locusts feed upon plant life and tree life and they utterly destroy it. But these locusts are commanded not to touch those things. And neither, listen as verse 4 goes on, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. The 144,000 have that seal. And they go forth to hurt and to destroy. Now listen to verse 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented for five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. But Doug, what is this? It is what it says. It is literal. They will have power to strike. They, they have, I have heard that those that are stricken by scorpion really want to die. Because the pain is so horrible and so awful. I believe these are demon locusts. He goes on, listen to what he tells us. I'll come back to verse 6. And the shapes of the locusts were like horses, were like unto horses prepared into battle. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns of gold. And on, and their faces was the faces of man. And they had hair as the hair of a woman in their teeth were teeth of lions, and they had brass breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots, of many horses running to paddle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and their stings in their tails, and in their power was to hurt man five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollo, one woe is past, and behold, there come two more woes hereafter. These demon locusts are given five months. Locusts have five months. When locusts come, they have five months. These demon locusts are given five months. They can only do what God will allow them to do and to accomplish. And they come to hurt man, not those who are sealed by God, but those who are not sealed. They can't touch those people of God. This gives us a little glimpse, I believe, just a small glimpse into the spiritual world. Amen? Some people say they'll be invisible because they're demons. You won't be able to see them. Some people say they're visible. I won't argue the point, but I somehow don't think he would have gave us this kind of description unless you'd be able to see them. Don't know that for sure. But these are demon locusts that come against man to bring harm and hurt. There is only one way to stand against the enemy of God. It is not psychology. It is not man's way. It is not by me trying to live better. Us church folks is bad about that. Well, I I just, you know, I need to, I need to live better. I need to pray more. Yeah, those things are good, but that won't defeat the devil. You don't have many preachers stand and tell you that. What will defeat the devil is the cross of Calvary. It's your faith in the cross. That's what it is. That faith that you play. Devil, you can come against me. You can bring to my mind. You can say whatever you want. I know my faith is in Christ and in Christ alone. And I know my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And I know, oh, hallelujah, that regardless of what you say or what you do or what you bring to my mind, I am a child of Almighty God. And if you keep on resisting the devil and holding to the cross, he will flee. Hallelujah. Mm. I could preach, but i got to go on. Listen to what he says. One woe's past, and there's two more woes hereafter. The sixth angel sounded. Verse 13. 
This is the second woe and the sixth trumpet. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. This is before the altar of incense. Saying to the six angels which had the trumpet, listen to these things today, church. Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. But Doug, what does this mean? It means just what it says. Get you a map. Google it. It's a lot easier to Google it. I just pick that phone up and say, find Euphrates. And there it is. Look where it's at. Look where it's at. Right there at Euphrates is where all began the Garden of Eden. Right in that area where two rivers meet. Right there is where sin and man was cast out of the garden. Right there is where man became so wicked that God said it repented him that he had made man. And he set out a plan for the ark. One man and his family survived right there. Right there, just a little later on, people began once again to build the Tower of Babel. And all the wickedness of the earth has started right there in that little seat. I believe with all my heart, count me crazy, count me whatever you want, I believe there's four angels that are bound right there. I believe they want to be loose. I, I, I just believe their britches is on fire. They're just wanting to get into meanness. They're just wanting to tire down and destroy because that's what the devil desires to do. I believe they are there and on that day they will be loosed. These four angels in verse 15 were loosed. They were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of man. We won't get into the debate that goes on over this. Some people say this is the time that they have left. Some people say that they were prepared exactly for that moment and that hour. And that's why he uses this terminology for a year, for to slay a day, for an hour, a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of man. Verse 16, listen to these words. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand that's two hundred million and I heard the number of them now again you believe it like you want to believe it a lot of people look here and they see where where this is situated at and they look on further to the east and further to the east you'll find Syria, Iraq, you go just a little further and you'll find a country, a little old small country that don't have many people called China. I was being facetious there. You have a country that could supply a 200 million man army in just a moment. I won't argue the point. You have people that began to look at these weapons and they say, well, you know, th these weapons, you can go back to the Vietnam War and you can see when they had gunners on the back of our planes and it sounds like some of the things that they're talking about. They don't use them planes anymore. We're going from them type planes to missiles now. And before long, we'll be using laser. Many people look and they say, oh, those tanks, you know, that's, that's the tanks when it talks about the smoke and the fire billowing out. Well, those things might not be even in use when this comes to pass. I can't help but believe this is a literal demon army, an army from a hell that God brings to this earth. The wrath of the Lord. Man will look at what is going on regardless. Man will look at what is happening and they will know that it is the hand of Almighty God that is bringing these judgments to pass. Now listen, verse 17. And I'm drawn to a close. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. I believe demon horses. But Doug, you've gone off the deep end. Well, I, just, I believe the Word of God. It's never failed. And them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, jansen and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the head of lions. 
and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Verse 18. By these three was the third part of man killed by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouths and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. I believe with all my heart this is a literal army from hell. Ephesians chapter 2, or chapter 6, I'm sorry. Verse 11, most of you could quote it. Sister Richardson loves this verse as much as any in the Word of God. We hear her mention it a lot. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. I'll start with verse 10, and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I believe this demon army will march. But let me tell you something, church. The devil is nothing to play with. I'm getting down to where I'm going to speak serious and I'm going to speak straight for just a moment. And I know time is getting away. I didn't know I had all these things to say. I'm going to hurry. Verse 20 tells us, And the rest of men were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the work of their hands. I want to tell you the devil is nothing to be messed with. I'm telling the church... I'm telling our most faithful members. I'm telling those who are listening out and on the program later on. The devil is nothing to play footsie with. You let him in your house all you want. How do that, Brother Doug? What you watch. What you listen to. Those fits. Oh, it's getting quiet now, ain't it? Those fits you throw. Well, that's just the way I am. Well, Christ needs to change you. Well, that's just me. Well, you shouldn't be me. You you should be a new creature. You get just as close to the devil as you want to. I want to get as far away from Him as I can because I realize He is a powerful creature. But because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, church, we're in this for reality. Christ is soon to come. Oh, hallelujah. I see people in this last day and time and, and they talk about Christ one moment on the Facebook and the next moment they're talking the most ungodly stuff or they're going to the most ungodly places. There's a problem. Well, Brother Doug, you're not the judge. No, but Christ said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. And if those fruits are not right, there is a problem. We ought to have a desire when the house doors of God's house is open unless there's some kind of great reason, not an excuse. We need to be in the house of God. Go ahead and play footsie with that strong enemy if you want to. I don't want to because it'll end bad. i got to hush. Verse 20, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. 
They see these things. They know these things are the hand of God. They realize the hand of God is bringing judgment. They see all these things happen. They see man die. They see fire from heaven. They see things as though they've never seen before. They see all these things taking place. People being destroyed and killed. They see all these things that science cannot explain away and that man cannot explain away. And yet they will not repent. Yet they seek something else to worship. God help our church when we run to and fro everywhere when God Almighty is right in our midst to be worshipped and to be praised. Amen. Neither. I'm going to hush. Verse 21. Oh, hallelujah. Neither repented they of their murders nor their sorcerers, nor their fornication. How much of this do you see rampant in today? I don't have time to get into it. You know what sorcerer, you know where the word sorcerer comes from? The Greek word, if you don't already know this, it's going to blow you away. It did me. The Greek word comes from pharmaceutical, from drugs. You don't know why your people are so why some people are so bound by drugs? I believe when people began to look to drugs, to pharmaceutical, to sorcery, I believe they opened themselves up to the very devil himself. You can say, oh, they could just quit if they wanted to. No, they can't. Outside the blood of the cross. You can send them to ever rehab, to ever redab. You can send them to whatever you want to. You can send them to go get their little shot of a little bit of drugs. That's, what, that's how they try to cure them. You don't believe me, you research it out. That's what they do. They send them to get a little shot of drugs. Yeah. We pay for it. Christ. Don't judge, but I'm not judging. I'm just telling you there is no other hope outside of Christ and His cross. And yet, they repent not. Today, men have the cross of Calvary. Today, men have the word preached. Today, there's not a ch- most people could walk to a church this Sunday morning. And they refuse the house of God. But yet now, boy, come Monday, if something happens. Oh, I love Jesus. I'm going to close with this right here. A wise minister. I once heard him say this. The Cochran. He said, we sang the song, Oh, how I love Jesus. And I love that song. But I can't sing it anymore without thinking about this. He said, what we ought to do is turn it around and say, how do I love Jesus? Father, I, I, I just, everybody that can and will, I, I ain't done this in a while, and I know the time is going short, forgive me. I want us to come around this altar for just a moment and stand quickly, quickly. <laughs>